Hello, brothers and sisters and heart dwells family. May we all truly accept our weakness and boast in that, that the Lord's strength will be made perfect. I've mentioned to you guys our community went through a fiery trial for sure, where we all have gotten sick. It's been so hard and we're all recuperating, but it's really humbled us as many of us struggle to be so weak and incapable of doing basic things some days. We found ourselves wanting to get up and get busy again, but that is not what the Lord is wanting and has been allowing a slow healing process for us. Through the things said by others, I notice we are beginning to despise our weakness and wanting to get better so quickly, but the Lord wasn't allowing it. If we move too fast, who would pay for it the next day? So we all began to realize just take it slow and embrace this cross the Lord has given us and trust Him to heal us in His own time. This particular morning, I woke up feeling utterly discouraged as many thoughts were bombarding me once again to cause me to have fear and walk in unbelief. I decided to pull some rhema cards, and the first said, Distinguish good from bad spirits, so I knew I was under attack in my mind. The second said, Give grace time to work, meaning don't be in a rush, trust the Lord, He's working, and the prayer of grace you have asked for others is working. It just takes time. The next said, Offer today for all lukewarm souls, they caused me the most agony during my passion. And the last was, your great trust in me forces me continuously to grant you graces. We're doing the Divine Mercy Novena, and we're on the last day. And when I looked it up, that was the intention for the last day. So I began to realize maybe the Lord took my consolation of feeling zeal, passion, courage, and even faith, and gave it to the lukewarm souls today, who need to be revived and enkindled with their love for God. I began to pray for the lukewarm souls fervently, asking the Lord not to make them just a flame, but torchbearers who set others on fire. After worship, I began to say the binding prayer, but I was still feeling so flat. My heart was aching as I tried to hold back tears. I felt so discouraged, but I told myself to persevere in prayer instead. I began to hear the Lord speaking to me, cutting off my prayer. I thought, I should continue praying and listen for his voice after I get done. But I remember something Father Zico said to me, that prayer is means to connect with God. And when we connect with God, many times in our striving, we want to finish prayer. And it's like Jesus tapping us on the shoulder to talk to us. And we turn around to him and say, wait, Lord, I'm still praying. <laughs> when you visualize it, it's so silly. But we do that all the time. So I decided to stop and write down what he was saying. I came before Jesus. Hello, Lord, I'm here. How are you feeling? He said. I don't know, Lord, but utterly discouraged. Like all hope and joy of the future just zapped for me this morning. Like a cloud of sadness has come over my heart. All of them trying to smile through it. Well, beloved, it's what you're meditating on and who you're receiving from. Lying spirits abound and many demons of discouragement want you to give up and stop your forward motion. That is why the rain was given and you're constantly being taunted by demons of unbelief. I know it's been hard, my beloved, to walk by faith and not by sight, when nothing seems to have come to fruition or resulted in anything. But remember, give grace time to work. I am working and moving your life, the life of your loved ones, in your nation, and the life of this community. All is working according to my plan. Although the enemy of your soul would like for you to think differently, because they really believe they have the upper hand in all that's going on in the world. It is the darkest before the dawn, and dawn will and is breaking through. Will you trust me? Oh, help me, Lord, please help me to trust and believe your words. Will your great trust in me forces me continuously to give you many graces. You are riding on my grace even now. You're being held together fast and sustained by my grace. It will carry you through this threshold, and in all your trials, you'll make it through each one. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for stopping me, Lord, and praying to talk with me. Well, I know you are hurting and persevering through your pain to continue on with your prayers and duties. But I hate to see you this way, beloved. I hate to see my joy stolen from you, and how I appreciate so much your efforts to be obedient and to persevere in your prayers when you're hurting. But I am your God-man. Your honey God. <laughs> he said that smiling, and I long to comfort you and talk with you always to bring a smile upon your face. 
Of course, I started smiling because Jesus is so sweet and kind. I'm not distant, but so present to you, beloved little one. I'm here for you and would prefer you to talk to me about these things rather than just to move past how you're feeling because I feel your pain too. I am suffering with you and how very good it is when we talk to one another. It brings me great comfort and joy as well. When your heart is healed, my heart is healed. Do you understand now? Yes, Lord, I do. I love you, Jesus. Thank you for being such a great friend and spouse. Wow, I can feel the ache in my gut going away, slowly but surely. Jesus continued, You see there? My words bring life and healing. Thank you for listening, beloved. I want to talk with my brides about grace. You're not the only one battling these emotions and feelings. It's been hard for everyone. My brides, I'm so pleased and proud of each of you. For some, many of you have battled wanting to give up in the storm you find yourself in. But I am in the boat with you and will quiet the storm at the appropriate time. Trust me, my grace is sufficient for each of you in your weakness. I love to see my brides weak, vulnerable, and capable and looking for me for help because that is your true state. You are so very weak and the more you embrace your weakness, the more I rush to you with my grace. It is true that my grace rushes down to the lowliest places. The more weak and lowly you are, the more my strength is made perfect. You see, weakness is what qualifies you for my grace. I want you to really understand that. So many despise their weakness. You're taught in this world to be strong, to have it all together, to know the right thing to do, to know the right thing to say, to have an attitude that is self-sufficient self-reliant and self-confident. The key word in all of those things is self. In this world, you're taught to rely so much on yourself. Therefore, you despise any weakness you see in yourself. And even in my church, it is rampant. You have ministers, pastors, shepherds, and servants who are hurting deeply. But in order not to come across as weak, they wear a mask. They can't be open with their flock because they'll be seen as weak. They cannot for sure expose their faults or struggles. Why? Because they must be strong leaders not to weaken the others. I tell you, my brides, what weakens the soul is when they carry the burden on their own. When they allow pain, hurt to go undetected or unconfessed, it weakens them and grows like an infection in their soul. It is worse when they cover it all because they then produce other souls who will fall by not sharing their weaknesses and putting on the facade that they are strong when in fact, they are the weakest. My beloved little ones, I took on human weakness during my passion. I looked utterly pitiful in the eyes of everyone. Even my mother couldn't do much in the midst of her silent tears and pain, but sigh and pity of what the father had decided to do to me, in me, and through me. I fell not only once, but three different times in the weight of my cross, my utter human weakness and incapability to walk any longer. With one sigh of my heart, I could have had legions of angels come to my rescue. The cross obliterated in pieces, the ground shaking, and the soldiers and crowd goals who were taunting me struck dead in a millisecond, just with my sigh. That is the power and authority the Father gave me. I could have rose up like the superhero of your day and completely brought my enemies to nothing in strength and much power, but I didn't. I was not to be God carrying the cross, but a mere man who laid down his divinity to the Father for the sake of your salvation, for the sake of grace, the grace of courage and perseverance that I knew souls desperately needed to overcome this world's trials and suffering. I had to be weak, vulnerable, and pitiful before all men so that the Father's strength would be perfected in me, and it was perfected until the end. At my last words, it is finished, meaning every grace needed for mankind was perfected in me. It was indeed finished. Now I knew that souls could endure, could persevere, could live as I lived, and could also make it, to finish the race as I did. I finished it so that you all may finish well. Your weakness is so very beautiful. Your <clears throat> Your weakness is so very beautiful to me, my brides. I know each of you, and each of your weaknesses very well. 
and I don't turn in shame, but rather I run to comfort, carry, and strengthen you. So please don't despise your weakness. Don't be discouraged by it, nor hide it from others. I don't want a bride who has it all together, nor do I want the world to see that. I want a bride who's faithful amidst her mess, who's enduring amidst her many falls, who's utterly helpless but continuously relying on me, who boasts in her weakness and who humbly accepts who she's not and who she is by the grace of God. Each of you are a woven tapestry of my grace, flying high above the worries and woes of life. Rely on my grace, call upon me for more grace, and I will carry you through. That was the end of Jesus' message. Wow, so beautiful and profound. I shared this with Mother Claire, and she had these words of wisdom to say, which I thought I would also share with you guys. Mother Claire states, For those who are called by God, you are appointed, you don't come equipped. He appoints you, and then he equips you afterwards. It's Christ through you that people see, not you being a high, hot shot. You come naked and broken in that role, so that God can use you. But if you think you have to be somebody before you become somebody, you get humbled and God will expose who you are. And that is all she had to say. Take it, for some, take it from someone who knows and has been broken so many times. And God is used by his grace at the age of 75 to run, build, and grow a ministry that is touching so many. So family, embrace your weakness. Rather, cherish it. Coming from someone who is so weak and truly incapable, but yet God still uses by his grace. God bless you, family, to the next message.